Hello there everyone and welcome back to the problem solving video series for introductory mechanics. Uh, today's video in particular is going to be um, applicable to more than just the mechanics class. So we're just going to be going over equation sheets, which are pretty general and being able to maximize their potential as a really useful tool for getting through this physics class. So let's just get into it. There are generally two types of equation sheets that you can expect to encounter in a physics class. So you'll either have professors that will go ahead and provide you with a pre-written list of equations to then go ahead and use on your exams uh, or in combination with or instead of, you could have uh, a professor that allows you to write your own equation sheet. So I've been in classes where I've definitely only been provided a prescribed list from the professor. I've been in classes where they only let you bring in one, you know, regular size eight and a half by 11 page front and back filled out where you can write whatever you want. And I've also seen classes where even though the professor is providing you with an equation sheet, they also give you the option to have a cheat sheet with you as well. Equation sheets are meant to be able to provide you with kind of a one stop shop for being able to see all the mathematical relationships and physical concepts that you've boiled down into mathematical formulas throughout your lecture or in the textbook. Um, but because physics is never really that straightforward, let's get into my recommendations for how you can make these tools even better and have them work for you. So in the first case, let's talk about if you're given an equation sheet, um, you have an equation sheet provided to you by your professor. And again, if I'm looking down, my iPad is there and I just don't want to mess anything up. Okay. Da, 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 da. Yeah. If you have that first situation where you are going to be provided with an equation sheet, my very first tip is going to be to try and get that equation sheet as soon as you can. Now, this is usually not going to happen until about the week before the exam. So professors will usually try and hold these back from you. Um, just because they don't want to hand you something out and then by the time, you know, at the very, very first week of class, you have your first exam, you know, a couple weeks later and things could have changed by then. You didn't get to cover what you should have, so on and so forth. There's always a million reasons for things to change when it comes to exam times. And I'm sure from the, per from the professor's perspective, they don't want to be tied down to something that they handed out the first week of class, especially when things change. So with that being said, even when you do get them, even with just a week um, at a time, I would go ahead and tell you guys to print out two copies of the equation sheet. And then with your first copy, you're going to go ahead and use it every single time that you are doing physics, whether you're sitting in class, whether you're sitting in lab, when you're doing your homework, when you're just rewatching lectures, if you're doing anything involving your physics class, just have your that equation sheet out with you and take notes and annotate, especially if there's something missing from that equation sheet that you couldn't just use that on its own to be able to solve problems or understand what's going on. So this is just going to give you an opportunity to kind of add in and jot in notes and information and maybe give context to equations that are pretty boiled down, especially when they're on the professor's sheet. They usually try and distill them to like their most basic form without any other information. And you could be missing some spe special circumstances or certain types of problems where there could be some conceptual tricks that you can use. Um, to make things a little bit easier. So I will show a quick example of this. So I'm gonna go onto the pad. Three, two, one. And I should be screen recording. Okay. So in this example, we're just gonna do something pretty simple, 1D kinematics um, example. If a ball is thrown straight up with a velocity of five meters per second, how long will it take to reach its maximum height? 
and then I screenshotted directly from the P201 class their equation sheet for spring 2021, uh, since this is primarily who this video series is for. So if we were to go ahead and write out our givens, just what we have, we can say, so we know that our initial, ooh, there we go. We know that our initial velocity is gonna be our five meters per second. We know our acceleration is just gonna be acceleration due to gravity since we're throwing the ball straight up in the air, minus 9.81 meters per second squared. And we'll go ahead and say that our initial position is zero. And we need to know time. But if we take a look at all of our other unknowns, we also don't have what that max height actually is. So we don't have a number for that. So we don't know what max height or y is. And we also don't know um, what the final velocity is going to be. Well, I guess that's going to be the hint because that's, that's the trick that we're going to use. Okay, so we don't have a number for that final velocity, but for anything that's going to be going up, stopping, and changing direction, like when you throw something up and it reaches a maximum height, once it's at that maximum height, the velocity at that point is zero. So that is a tidbit of information that I might go ahead and add to my equation sheet. Max height, and then maybe write a little arrow, V equals zero. You need that little extra bit of information. If we didn't have that, we don't have an equation that allows us to solve for time because we couldn't use this guy because we don't know what that max height number is. Um, and same with this equation. However, if we know that V is going to be going to zero, then we could actually use this top equation with zero equals five minus 9.81 times T. And then we could rearrange that and solve for T. So yeah, so that's the type of thing that I'm that I'm trying to get at with things that you might want to add. I mean, you can even go ahead and write out the fact that like on that one, uh, you know, the position still said x, but I was using them for the vertical for y. So you could put something about what the variables mean. Anything that you need to kind of just hammer home that you don't remember off the top of your head. So practicing with your equation sheet is just gonna give you that opportunity to see those things over and over again that you don't re recall as quickly and just haven't remembered as well as some of the other things. Um, it also gives you a chance just to learn the layout. So that way when you're in, I know for myself, I get such bad test anxiety. So like when you're in the testing environment, you don't necessarily want that to be the time that you're seeing something for the very first time and like scanning all over the page and not knowing what you have and not knowing where it is. And it just could lead to more being flustered and more anxiety and decreased performance that's based on something entirely not having to do with physics, which we want to try and eliminate as much as possible. Yeah, and I just can't, can't overstate how important it is to just keep rewriting things or adding notes to the way that the physics equations are standardly written so that the information makes sense to you. Like just for learning in general, being able to rewrite something in terms that you're going to be able to understand is just going to pay back dividends. Like you're just going to get so much more out of it if you could put it in your own words. So being able to practice and have those notes there for yourself, like even if you're yelling at yourself, sometimes you need to do that. <laughs> it just is another way to help boost your learning and get that information over and over and over again. And repetition is typically key when it comes to learning something. 
So now let's talk about the second circumstance, which I guess technically even if you're in the first circumstance, I'm still going to recommend that you do this, especially because of what I said before that you might not get your equation sheet to the last minute. So that's going to be if you get a cheat sheet or if you get an option to write your own equation sheet. Um, so the process is pretty much going to be exactly the same. You just have to do a little bit more of the work yourself. So how I would go about structuring your own equation sheets is going through your lectures, your textbook, wherever you're really going to get the main first presentation of information and then going through and picking out which equations are going to be the most important and then again adding in your little additional comments and things that you need to just fully understand how to use those equations properly. Um, now you might be asking yourself, Curran, how do I know which equations are going to be important? Well, one, almost all the equations that are going to be important are almost always boxed. Uh, so whether it's on your lecture slides, whether it's in the textbook, most of the time the equations that are really important are going to be boxed. They'll be put in a chapter summary. They will be somewhere special. The other option, of course, is that you don't really know until you start using them. So this might be a little bit of an iterative process. You might start with a whole, you know, if you're neurotic like me, you might start off writing down every single math equation that you possibly have, and then you go and do the problems and realize, well, I don't need this, I don't need that, I remember this, this is something that I learned in fourth grade, like, who knows. So you could kind of eliminate from there based on what you do need. And if you under write down equations and try to do problems with just your equation sheet and then realize that you can't, then, you know, that would clue you in that you might be missing something. Um, once you have those equ equations down, uh, written down on your piece of paper along with your comments, same deal. Um, go through and practice with them, use them to do your homework, get really comfortable with them. The nice thing about being able to write your own cheat sheet is that you're also able to draw in or add in some things that might be like prereq information that you definitely wouldn't have or more likely wouldn't have going into a physics class. So if you need to write down trigonometry rules, if you need to write down things like that, um, this would be the time to do it if you want to draw pictures if there's like a very specific example of a type of problem that you are like I mess up drawing this picture and getting this set up right every single time I do this problem then this is the opportunity for you to write down a correct setup somewhere on your cheat sheet and have that there for you if you encounter something like that of course this is uh, you know also a negative because you have to structure and format the equation sheet yourself which could potentially lead to space issues if you don't have the best handwriting that might not be the best for you oh so, with all that being said that's my two cents on equation sheets I think they're really important I think making your own equation sheet is a super useful study guide uh, I got in the habit of doing them during my undergrad, going through my physics classes, and it's just really nice to not have to be flipping through your notes all the time and just know that you have one spot to look for all of your equations and they're just there ready to go um, and makes things a little bit easier um, for a pretty difficult subject. So I will see you guys next time for a next prob our next problem solving tip and Happy physicsing. And of course, we'll have the real howitzer give our outro clip and say bye to everybody.